is a question for you. Which of these two acids is a strong acid? Would you say it's HCl, hydrochloric acid, or HF, hydrofluoric acid? And how do you supposed to know the answer? Well, you need to know the seven strong acids. HCl is a strong acid, but HF is a weak acid. And that's something you just have to know. So let's talk about the strong acids that you need to memorize. And typically, if you see an acid that's not listed here, it's safe to say that it's going to be a weak acid. The first one is HCl, which we covered already. The next one is HBr. And the third one is HI. What helps me to remember these three is I think of the periodic table, where we have nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. If you add a hydrogen to these elements, you're going to make a strong acid. And so it's easy to remember the first three. Now some other ones that you need to know are nitric acid, sulfuric acid, and perchloric acid. You might also see this one too. HClO3, chloric acid. The pKa of HCl is roughly around negative 7 to negative 8. And for HNO3, the pKa is about negative 1.4. Some will say negative 1.3. And that's how you could determine if an acid is really a strong acid or weak acid. It's by looking at its pKa values. Typically, if the pKa value is less than negative 1, like negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, it's going to be a strong acid. HClO3, for example, has a pKa value of approximately negative 1. And so about 92% of the acid dissociates at room temperature. Now let's talk about strong acids and weak acids and how they dissociate in water. When you have a strong acid like HCl, if you react it with water, it completely or nearly completely dissociates. So you can just use one arrow to show that the reaction for the most part goes to the right. And so you're going to get H3O plus and Cl minus. So this is the acid this is acting as the broncillary base because it's a proton acceptor. Acids are proton donors. They give up the hydrogen. And this is the conjugate acid, and that is the conjugate base. So whenever an acid loses a hydrogen atom, it turns into the conjugate base. And whenever the base accepts a proton, or a hydrogen ion rather, it turns into the conjugate acid. Now, when dealing with a weak acid like HF, the reaction is going to look very similar. The only difference is it's reversible. You're going to have two arrows instead of one because they can go in both directions. But you're going to get the conjugate acid H3O plus and the conjugate base F minus or the fluoride ion. So that's the difference between a strong acid in water and how a weak acid interacts in water. So one is reversible and the other for the most part is not. Now let's talk about the strong bases that you need to know. Compounds that release hydroxide ions in the solution are strong bases. So these include lithium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, strontium hydroxide, barium hydroxide, and things like that. But notice that these hydroxides are soluble in water. So you need to be familiar with your solubility rules. An example of a weak base that contains hydroxide would be aluminum hydroxide. 
this base is not soluble in water under neutral conditions. So let me uh, give you an example. Because lithium hydroxide is soluble in water, it's going to completely dissociate into the lithium ion and the hydroxide ion. And just as a strong acid completely dissociates into H2O plus and the conjugate base, strong bases, they completely dissociate into their respective ions. Now, a weak base like aluminum hydroxide, it doesn't dissociate completely because it's insoluble in water under neutral conditions. So only a small amount actually dissolves into hydroxide ions. And so that's why this base is much weaker than this one due to its solubility in water. Now there are some other weak acids and weak bases that you should know. Let's go over some common ones. HF is a weak acid. We talked about that one already. Another one is nitrous acid. And then you have hypochlorous acid. There's HCN, hydrocyanic acid, acetic acid, and also the ammonium ion. That's another weak acid. So these are just a few. There's more, but I want to show you the relationship between weak acids and weak bases. Now, the conjugate of a weak acid will be a weak base. Sodium fluoride is a weak base. Sodium nitrite is also a weak base. Potassium hypochlorite, weak base. KCN, that's weak base. Sodium acetate, and even ammonia. These are all weak bases. Now, what happens to the pH of the solution if you put, let's say, a weak acid in the solution? So let's say if we add HF to water, what will the pH be? Will it be less than 7, equal to 7, or greater than 7? If you put a weak acid in water, the pH will be less than 7. If you put a base in water, the pH will be greater than 7. So if we were to put sodium fluoride in water, the pH is going to be above 7. So this is considered a basic salt because it's a salt that if you dissolve in water, the pH will increase. If you put, let's say, NH4Cl, that is an acidic salt because it has NH4+, plus, the ammonium ion, which is acidic. And so that's going to produce a pH less than 7. But what about sodium chloride? Is that an acidic salt or a basic salt? What would you say? It turns out that sodium chloride is neutral. If you put it in water, it doesn't really change the pH. The pH will stay about 7. So why is... NaCl, a neutral salt, and why is NaF a basic salt when they look very similar? NaF is the conjugate of a weak acid. NaCl is the conjugate of a strong acid. The conjugate base of a strong acid is so weak that it's going to be neutral in solution. The conjugate base of a weak acid produces a stronger base such that it's strong enough to affect the pH of a solution. So the pH won't stay at 7, so thus it's going to be a basic salt. And that's how you can tell if a salt is going to be basic or if it's going to be neutral. It's by looking at the conjugate acid. If the conjugate acid is a weak acid, then this is going to be a basic salt. If it's a strong acid, it's going to be a neutral salt. Here's another example. Potassium iodide versus 
potassium, let's say, acetate. Which one is a neutral salt and which one is a basic salt? Feel free to pause the video. So this one is going to be a neutral salt. And the reason for that is HI is a strong acid. So the conjugate base is a very, 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 very weak, such that it's neutral. Now, this one here is going to be a basic salt. The reason being is the conjugate acid, which is acetic acid, that's a weak acid. It's not a strong acid. So therefore, this is going to be more basic than this one. The weaker the acid, the stronger the base. And so that's how you can tell if this salt is going to be neutral or if it's going to be basic. It's by looking at the strength of the conjugate acid. Now, there's a lot of other stuff to know about acids and bases, but this is just a basic introduction. I'm going to post more links in the description section below. If you want to calculate, let's say, the pH of a strong acid or the pH of a weak acid, given its Ka, its acid association constant. Or if you need help with like buffer solutions and stuff like that. So feel free to take a look at those links. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Thanks again for watching.